In the March of 1942, a 31-year-old woman named Ann Miller of New Haven, Connecticut, was lying in a hospital in critical condition. Her body temperature was over 107 degrees. She was also drifting in and out of consciousness, and trillions of bacteria were counted in her body. Doctors were sure she would not survive. After countless attempts to save her, a drug named penicillin was then injected in her body. When the drug showed no adverse effects, doctors began injecting the drug periodically. Within 24 hours, her condition had grown tremendously better, and she began eating full meals. Her doctors were perplexed at the results. Ann Miller survived and she would live a long life. Her survival impacted a cycle of new medical innovations and changes. But where did that drug come from? Who discovered it? It all started with a man named Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming was born on August 6, 1881, in Lockfield, Scotland. He was the second youngest of a family of 13 children. Fleming went to school at a small schoolhouse miles away from his home, and in 1894, when Fleming was 13, he moved to London with his siblings to study at a Brandon Institute. Fleming's uncle passed away in 1901, when he was 21 and his uncle left Fleming over 250 pounds, an equivalent of over $20,000 today. Fleming then decided to go to medical college, and he chose to enroll in St. Mary's Hospital in the same year. Fleming graduated and became a surgeon in 1906, but he enjoyed experimenting instead. He joined other scientists under the scientist Almaroth Wright, the head bacteriologist at St. Mary's Hospital. Fleming soon discovered a substance he called a lysozyme a recurring element in tears and sweat. He realized that it contained certain microbes that may destroy bacteria. Sadly, the lysozyme would only destroy very minor bacteria, which cures for those bacteria existed, but this minor discovery would impact a greater one, which would result in one of the greatest innovations of the century. What would happen years later was so miraculous that Fleming would say, If I may offer advice to the young laboratory worker, it would be this. Never neglect an extraordinary appearance or happening. On September 28, 1928, Fleming returned from vacation to discover there was a piece of mold sitting on one of his open petri dishes containing bacteria. Many people would have dismissed the mold. Nevertheless, a closer look by Fleming revealed that the mold had destroyed the bacteria under it. Fleming was intrigued by this mold, and he began performing experiments on it soon identified the mold as belonging to the genus Penicillium, and he named it Penicillin. Penicillin works by inhabiting cell division, and prevents bacteria from dividing, thus destroying both the replicated cell and the original cell itself. Fleming realized that the mold had the potential to destroy many different disease-causing bacteria, and he wrote a paper about it. Unfortunately, he did not have good presentation skills, no one paid any attention to his discovery. Fleming soon realized that the mold was extremely unstable, meaning it worked sometimes and sometimes it didn't. He was discouraged and he quit studying about penicillin. Jesus. A few years later, in 1939, an Oxford scientist named Ernst Chain read Fleming's paper, and he was impacted by this new innovation. Chain wrote to Fleming, and with his colleagues Howard Florey and Norman Heatley, they began conducting experiments themselves on penicillin. The first clinical trial was published, which involved giving mice streptococci and using penicillin to cure the disease. The drug worked. The men then decided that they should mass produce penicillin, but they ran into some obstacles. First, penicillin grew in minuscule amounts. Out of a million cells grown, only one piece of penicillin was found. Second, World War II was going on at the time and for fear that the laboratory that penicillin was being grown in would be bombed, the scientists moved their facility to the United States. The right conditions had to be produced in order to grow penicillin. The mold needed a lot of oxygen, and corn steep liquor, a common waste product, proved to be crucial for growing penicillin. Different species of penicillin were found, including Penicillium chrysogenum, which changed the way penicillin grew so that it had doubled the amount of penicillin produced. It impacted the commercial growth of penicillin. Eventually, enough penicillin had been produced in order to save the lives of many people and soldiers. Penicillin was injected in the form of a liquid with a certain brown powder for consistency.
The first recipient of penicillin was 41-year-old Albert Alexander, an English constable, who later died because he was given minimal dosage of the drug. On a happier note, five other patients were later given the drug, and they survived, including 31-year-old Ann Miller. Another example of a person who survived penicillin was Morton Patterson, and penicillin cured his osteomyelitis when he was a child. He is still alive and well today. Penicillin would aid the soldiers on the Allied side during World War II. Many soldiers died not of gunshot or shrapnel injuries, but of the blood poisoning caused by these. Penicillin was able to impact the effects of World War II. Because penicillin saved thousands of soldiers on the battlefield, more soldiers were available to the Allied side of the war, thus helping the Allies win the war. Even though penicillin was advertised to the general public, there were some obstacles brought on by this idea. $20 million were spent to build 21 penicillin manufacturing plants in 1945. Despite that, these plants would only yield a combined total of 9 pounds of penicillin a month. 9 pounds of penicillin would only help the soldiers, and there wouldn't be enough left for the public. Fortunately, by the end of World War II, many more penicillin plants were built, and enough penicillin was manufactured and able to cure many diseases. Scientists also discovered how to convert penicillin into a pill in 1945, which changed the procedure that required doctors to inject a needle every three hours and allowed penicillin to be consumed like normal medication. Even though Fleming discovered penicillin, there are still people who claim that he is not the first one to discover it. Many people discovered unidentified molds that seemed to kill bacteria before Fleming's time, such as Joseph Lister, William Roberts, Ernest Deschene, and even Louis Pasteur. There were even two people in 1920, Andre Gracia and Sarah Dath, who discovered penicillin, and they made an attempt to publicize their discovery, although they did not continue with their experiments. People argued that Fleming was simply lucky that he got a break for his discovery. They also argue that many ancient cultures, such as the Chinese, were aware of using fungi and common injuries to heal them, and Fleming's accidental discovery was, in reality, a hoax. Yet, many people in favor of the fact that Fleming discovered penicillin also argue that even though these records were kept in their diaries, they never made a real effort to publicize penicillin. Regardless of who discovered it, Fleming, Chain, and Flory all shared the Nobel Prize for their discovery and the cultivation of penicillin in 1945. The three men went around the world giving speeches, and they all lived to be very old. Today, there are many innovations and changes in the medical and pharmaceutical fields, all of which could not have been possible without the amazing discovery of penicillin. Although the use of antibiotics is controversial, as many people are either allergic to them or they don't work, the work in this field should expand greatly as these great innovations continue to impact more lives.